Continuing now with my series on trick questions, or possibly trick questions, I thought of the most amazing title. Come on, you've got to give me a like or a comment for this title. The title is Trick or Trite, right? <laughs> I'm laughing at my own joke. Trite means common, banal, cliche, and I'm talking about trite questions where there is no trick, or there might be a trick. So to those of you who are new to this, basically this question may contain a trick, that you can fall for, or may just be a normal, kind of somewhat straightforward question. Not necessarily an easy question, just there's no traps in there, or it might have a hidden trick. For all of these questions, I recommend you to pause the video, try to answer them yourself, see if you fall for the trap, or maybe there's not a trap, and then look at my explanation. There's three questions in roughly ascending order of difficulty, but I'll let you be the judge of that. Okay, question one, trick or trite? <laughs> Coming up to Halloween, right? It's a pun, trick or treat. Anyway, I'm getting beside myself. Okay, we've got n squared equals n equals one minus n plus one. What's bigger, quantity a or quantity b? Quantity a is n, quantity b is negative n. Okay, this question is relatively difficult, but there's no trick here, I would say. It's just a matter of figuring out what n is, and then you can assess which quantity is bigger. There's no particular trap here. For example, there are only very few numbers where n squared equals n, as in when you square the number, it equals the original number. An example of that would be one. One squared equals one. Another example, possibly the only other example, is zero. Zero squared equals zero. I actually can't think of any others, but if you can, type it in chat. Either way, we can't decide whether it's one or zero. So let's look at this last part. One minus n plus one. And remember that's got to equal n and it's got to equal n squared. Now is that true for one and is it true for zero? Well, if we put one in there, it does work. One minus one is zero plus one is indeed one. So it does equal n, which is one, and does equal n squared, which is one. But if we try it for zero, it doesn't work. 1 minus 0 is 1, plus 1 is 2. So this doesn't work for 0, but it does work for 1. So we can be sure that n is 1, no trap here, no trick, n is 1, and therefore quantity a is bigger because quantity a is 1, and quantity b is negative 1. Quantity a is bigger, so a is the answer, no trap. And maybe the next question will have a trap, or maybe it won't, we'll see. Let's get on to the next one. X is a prime number, less than 100. If an amount Y is increased by X percent and then decreased by X percent, it is now equal to Z. What's bigger, quantity A, which is Y, or quantity B, which is Z? As ever, pause the video and have a go. This question did have a kind of trick to it or a kind of trap to it, because many people think that if you increase by a certain percentage and then decrease by the same percentage, you get back to the original. But that's not actually true. If you try increasing something by, say, 20% and then decreasing it by 20%, then you don't get back to your original amount. So many people would pick C, thinking that Y just came back to being itself again, and so Y must equal Z, but no, it doesn't. Well, what does it become equal to then? If you increase by a percentage first, you end up with a bigger number. Imagine we started with the number 100 and then increased by 20%. We end up with a bigger number, right? 120. If we then decrease that bigger number by the same percentage, we're decreasing by a bigger amount. 20% of 120 is 24. And if we take away 24 from 120, we end up with 96. In other words, if you increase by a percentage first and then decrease by that same percentage, you end up with a lower amount than you started with. So Y is actually bigger than what it ended up being, which is Z. By the way, if we'd have decreased first and then increased by X percent, we actually still end up in the same place. Believe it or not, if you decrease by X percent and then increase by X percent, you still don't get back to the original. You still end up with the same number that's lower than the original. We can quickly try that for the number 100. If we decrease that by 20%, we're down to 80. 
increase that by 20%, we're back up to 96, which is the same number we had in the original example. So it doesn't matter which one you do first, increasing or decreasing. Either way, if you're increasing and decreasing by the same percentage, you end up with a lower amount. So quantity A is actually bigger. Some of you would have thought that the first sentence is going to make a big difference. X is a prime number, less than 100, but not particularly. That's just to say that X is positive and X is not zero. Of course, if X was zero and you increase by 0% and decrease by 0%, then nothing changes. The fact that we know it's a prime number does tell us that X is not zero. So some of you might have felt that the first sentence contained some sort of trap, but not particularly. It was just telling you that X was positive. The real trap was thinking that Y equals Z, whereas actually Y is greater than Z. You end up with a smaller amount. No need for algebra, by the way, or complex working out, as you might have seen. Okay, time for the last question. As ever, pause the video. This is the hardest one and try it yourself. Or is it the hardest one? We'll see. Okay, well, indeed, I think it is the hardest one. So we have this integer n that has three unique prime factors. And what is bigger, the number of unique prime factors of 3n or the number of unique prime factors of 10n? Now, there's two reasons why people would think that quantity b has to be bigger. First, we're multiplying by 10 compared to multiplying by 3. And straight away, people think, well, quantity b is going to be a bigger number because we're doing 10 times n rather than 3 times n, and bigger numbers tend to have more prime factors. So that's why some people would pick quantity b. Other people would pick quantity b for more smart reasons, which is that 10, if you break it down, contains a 5 and a 2. And therefore, the 10, when you multiply it by n, you are surely adding two unique prime factors, 5 and 2, compared to if you multiply n by 3, the 3 is only bringing one unique prime factor to the party, just the 3. So it's not adding as many unique prime factors. So surely quantity b is bigger for that reason. Surely the number of unique prime factors of 10n is more than the number of unique prime factors of 3n because we're adding two unique factors rather than one unique prime factor. Well, here's where the trick comes in. We don't know what n is. If n is a multiple of 10, for example, 100, then the unique prime factors of n would be 5 and 2 only. If you break down a number 100, you get 5 squared times 2 squared. Therefore, timesing n by 10 would be bringing no more unique prime factors to it. Because the 10, who's bringing a 5 and a 2 to the party, the party already had 5s and 2s because of n being 100. So the number of unique prime factors would still be 2, just 5 and 2. Compare that to quantity a. Remember, if n was 100, then the 3 times n would be bringing one additional unique prime factor. Because if n was 100, containing the prime factors 5 and 2, then the 3 would make that 3 unique prime factors, 3, 5, and 2. So there are examples where 10n contains fewer unique prime factors than 3n. There are examples where the 10, bringing along a 5 and a 2, adds fewer unique prime factors than bringing in a 3 in quantity a. So sometimes quantity a can be bigger than quantity b. Of course, we can think of other examples, most examples, where the number of unique prime factors of 10n would be more. For example, if n was an unrelated number like 7, well, 10 times 7 would have three unique prime factors, the 5 and the 2 from the 10 and the 7, so that's 3, whereas quantity a would have only two unique prime factors, the 3 and the 7, if you do 3 times 7. So, of course, there are examples where quantity b is bigger, making the overall answer d, because sometimes quantity a is bigger and sometimes quantity b is bigger. And that definitely counts as a trick question because a lot of students would have picked quantity b as being bigger. I hope you liked those tricks and traps and non-tricks or trite questions and enjoyed the title and learned a thing or two along the way. Not just about quantity comparison for the GRE, but about math in general. As ever, leave a like and a comment if you did, and I'll see you in the next video.